I tried to make a AAA quality game experience in 7 days, but first I should explain how I got to this point. In my last video I talked about how over the last few months I made 26 games, one for each letter of the alphabet from A to Z. If you haven't seen that video you can click the link below and check it out. As I made it through building each game I slowly transitioned from 2D games to 3D games. On average it took about 1 to 3 days to finish each game. You need to get your feet wet with a few smaller projects before moving on to anything serious. So today I'm going to talk about the last game, number 26, I call it Project Z. I ended up using Unreal Engine 4 because 5 was not quite stable enough for me, but Unreal Engine 4 still looks amazing, especially with metahumans. Metahumans are 3D human models that are very realistic and customizable. One of my big motivations for this project was to use a metahuman for the main character of the game, but that would only work if I had great animations to go along with it. Animation is the first thing I wanted to implement because I felt it would make or break the game. I didn't want to use existing scripts from the asset store, but I did grab some animation clips from Mixamo because I suck at creating animations and I don't have expensive mocap equipment to do that. After a bit of struggle, I was able to retarget the Mixamo animations to work nicely with the MetaHuman. I used blend spaces to smoothly blend between different locomotion animations. In terms of player rotation, the yaw controls the horizontal rotation of the player, but the pitch is treated a bit differently. The skeletal mesh needs to aim the gun where the crosshair is located vertically, so I used procedural animation for that, just rotating the upper spine according to the pitch. I wanted this game to be cinematic. I'm a huge fan of Rockstar games because of their cinematography and animation sequences. It feels like a movie. Creating cinematic sequences is quite different from developing gameplay mechanics. In some ways it's actually easier than creating gameplay because you can control how everything moves and what the player sees. I feel like cinematography is about showing something to the audience, but also about hiding things from the audience. There are all sorts of neat tricks you can do to make a shot look better than it normally would would in game. The animations that I got from Mixamo were awesome and really made certain parts of the game look higher budget than it was. I experimented with different ways of handling the crosshair. What I landed on was that the crosshair would be centered horizontally but not vertically. The reason is because I wanted to experiment with a non-traditional aiming system. By locking the pitch of the camera, I think it makes it feel more cinematic. But to be honest, I think most players would probably not be too fond of this. As for the bullet projectile, that's where it gets interesting. The most simple and accurate way to handle bullet projectiles, as far as I know, is to just cast a line trace from the camera to the crosshair at the center of the screen and visually make it look like the bullet is coming out of the gun. But in a third person shooter, the problem with this approach is that the character can shoot through walls as long as the camera can see the target. The solution is to first cast a ray from the camera to the target, then cast another ray from the muzzle of the gun to the target to make sure that the shot would technically be possible if it were really coming from the gun. Overall, the gun logic and visual effects are all compartmentalized and reusable across any actor that uses a gun. This includes giving damage, showing a muzzle flash, adding the bullet tracer, adding a decal for the bullet hole, the explosion effect on impact, the gunshot sound, and the impulse that's applied on impact. Basically anything you can do with a gun, the enemies can also do with the gun. Level design was the more fun part of the process, and it required zero lines of code. I first started off by blocking out the map with cubes to get a rough idea of the layout and scale. Then I added the road, which provided a linear sense of direction for the player. Then I slowly replaced the block out with nice buildings. Then later on, once the gameplay started coming along, I filled out the level with various props, which do have gameplay significance, providing cover for the player. At the end of the day, I used pre-made assets from the marketplace and none of the 3D assets were made by myself. Otherwise, the project would have taken months instead of days. Surprisingly, everything kind of came along nicely between the buildings, roads, cars, and various props. I wanted to add some details to the environment, but there were so many other higher priority things that I had to implement and I didn't have time. Remember, I only had seven days to make the entire game and I'm one person. Once I added audio for the gunshots, that's where it started to feel kinda like a real game. 
the cars have an alarm system and the bombs have a beeping sound. For the AI, I quickly realized just how much goes into creating good AI opponents. You need pathfinding so that the AI knows how to navigate the world. You can't just tell the NPC to go in a straight line from point A to point B. Also, you need to carefully specify which areas can be navigated by the AI. I had a weird bug where the enemies would sneak around the bounds of the playable area in order to find me, and it actually scared the crap out of me. The AI is a state machine with three states, idle, move, and find cover. The AI started to feel really good once their survival instincts kicked in. One thing worth noting is that I didn't give the AI any sensory logic. They can't see or hear anything. They are always aware that you exist, and they're always looking at you, which is creepy, but yeah. If I had more time, I would improve this area for sure. In the end, I beefed up the AI to make it very difficult if you just go in guns blazing, but it is beatable if you stay behind cover and stay far enough. I died many, 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 many times, and sometimes I accidentally shot the bomb, and everybody died, and that was really fun. So one of my favorite parts of game development is creating reusable objects. The objective of this game is to disarm the three bombs. For the bomb entities, I used a blueprint that handles all of the logic for how a bomb works. Ultimately, the way I designed the blueprint, I can place as many bombs as I want into the level and it'll automatically update the game state accordingly. The cars are another example of this. I bought these cars in a package from the marketplace and I took the original blueprint and added some modifications such as an alarm system when the car takes damage. Since all the cars use the same blueprint, I can update the logic for all of them at once. I've also created spawn points for the enemies, each of which is bound to a trigger volume. Once you step into the volume, it triggers a certain number of enemies to spawn with a specific amount of health. So by having a reusable blueprint for both the bomb and the spawn points, it was really easy to define how the game was going to work. On the last day, I did a few things to polish up the game experience. Nowadays, we don't use health bars, that's kind of old school, right? So I made it so that the screen turns bloody red as your health decreases, and your health regenerates after a few seconds of not taking damage. Creating a heads up display is frankly boring and I didn't see the need to really do that for this game, but I thought it was important to at least show the objective in the upper right corner and a nice animated transition for that. So let's talk a bit about code. When I make an Unreal Engine game, I strongly prefer to use C++ because I find it easier to manage complex logic with C++ rather than blueprints. But blueprints do make it easier to manage the visual side of things, so I usually end up using both C++ and blueprints. One thing I should mention is that regardless of whether you choose blueprints or C++, you're still going to be using the same underlying API. One thing that helped me out a lot was switching to the writer IDE. It has integration specifically for Unreal Engine, and it's much better than Visual Studio. So in conclusion, I'm not sure how I'm going to move forward with the Z project. It's just a prototype. If you want me to release it publicly so you guys can play it, feel free to smash that like button. Let me know in the comments. There are definitely improvements that could be made. For example, the AI could be better in multiple ways. There are features missing like a menu where you can change controls and video settings. You know, that stuff takes a little time and the polish phase can often take longer than the implementation phase. But in terms of the core gameplay and overall smoothness of the experience, I'm happy with the results. You know, I'm one guy and for seven days of work, it's not too shabby, right? That's it for this one, folks. Please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.